Welcome to Tell Me the Treasures. Today we're learning Suvas page 106, which discusses a dispute whether or not in the temple, if there are extra funds, which are called Moser Peros, whether or not they're allowed to take that extra money and to be able to engage in business practices with it, to take that cash and to be able to buy items such as wine, flour, oil, and to be able to at some point sell it at a profit. And basically the question is, do we allow this temple, the Beit HaMikdash, to be engaged in, in business activities? So on one hand, just as long as it's being done ethically and legally, there doesn't seem to be any reason why that should be a problem. So what? If they're able to make a couple of extra dollars, that sounds to be fine. However, according to the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, he says that when it comes to the temple, they should not be engaged in any business activities. That is not the business that they're in. And he gives two fascinating reasons why. First of all, he says the expression, Ein anios bimakom ashirus, that when there is wealth, there is no place to show any signs of poverty. And on the simplistic meaning, that's what that is coming to tell us, is the Beit HaMikdash, the temple, was a glorious, glorious structure. And we did not hold back even a penny when it came to its being built. And it was something which was obviously fantastic and spectacular to, to gaze upon. In fact, when it came to the structure of the second temple in the time of Herod the Great, we are told that if someone did not see this structure, they've never seen something like it in their life. So this is the total embodiment of wealth. And therefore, there is no place to act like you are poor when you are really demonstrating wealth. And that could have a lot of different meanings, but the idea simply again is that when it comes to the Holy Temple, we don't want to look like we're cutting corners. We don't want to look like we're being cheap in any way, but we always want to engage in the most extravagant activities. I often think of this, that if I ever splurge for a special occasion with my wife and we go to, let's say, a fancy restaurant, so at that point, even though I'm far from being constituted as an usher, but at that moment when you're in a fancy restaurant, ain malkam aneus but malkam ashirus, that once you're there, you might as well enjoy yourself. And to start acting cheap and cutting corners, that really takes away from the entire experience. But interestingly enough, he says another reason. He says that regarding the poor, that if a poor person comes, we have the issue of liquidity. Because if a poor person is coming and knocking on the temple's door, which you can imagine they often did that, recognizing that this is a place of generosity and kindness, if we have all of our liquid assets tied up in different things, such as, again, flour, all the different commodities, even though we may be saving a couple of dollars or profiting a couple of dollars by being engaged in business, we will not be able to help the poor people when they come. So it's a very interesting idea that when a person is involved in business and we're so busy trying to save money and to make money, we also have to recognize that there are other people in this world as well. And we should also try our best to be able to think of those people in the event that they come and are turning to us in the time of need that we should always have the availability to do so. And therefore, because of that, Temp the temple always had to have available funds, monies available, so that no person who is poor should ever be felt that he was turned away.